Hello, I'm the producer, Jacob Cook, and UpTalk is a weekly, upbeat, uplifting, forward-looking resource show offering expert perception and advice on personal growth and development. UpTalk will feature guests with inspiring stories and messages filled with informative, life-changing insights. The delivery of this information is through a blend of common sense and practical application. UpTalk will be a big assist in satisfying the hunger for knowing the path to success. And now to our hosts, Lou Vickery and Jason Will. Oh, well, welcome to UpTalk. I'm Lou Vickery, your host, and we're so excited that you're along with us today. Uh, Jason uh, has got an empty seat over there, so we got him out on secret assignment again. So he's just going to have to be right here with me. And I tell you what, I'm excited about being here. We got a couple of real special guests today that we want to uh, we want you to meet and uh, let them tell you their story. Uh, We're going to begin with uh, A.P. Stedham. Now, A.P. is a a writer, uh, a sports writer. Uh, He has uh, currently a host, a sports show. from the press box with AP, which is seen at WHEP in Foley, Alabama. But uh, he was a writer for Bama Magazine for a long time. He's a Heisman Trophy voter. Now, let me tell you, there's only there's less than a thousand of those throughout the country that vote on the Heisman Trophy. He's a member of the Football Writers Association, which also votes on uh, various individual awards. So uh, AP will be our first guest, and we're excited to have him along uh, to, uh, to share his story with us today. And then we'll follow that with Tammy Lindsay. Now, Tammy is, uh, currently has Tammy Lindsay Fitness, but boy, does she have an unusual and uh, somewhat uh, tragic background that she's going to share with us, and uh, we we look forward to having her aboard to share her story of how she's had to over what she's had to overcome to reach the stage now where she has her own business. So that's what it's going to look like today, and we're so excited that you're with us. Now stay right there. We'll be back right after this break. All right, welcome back to Up Talk. I'm Lou Vickery, your host, and. Uh, we have a special, and everybody's special, but this one's got, <laughs> A.P. Stedham is our special guest today, and A.P., I think, is our first person that we've had is strictly related to athletics. A.P., welcome. Hey, glad to be here. Thank you for having me on the show. It's great. To, it. It, it is really great to have you. A.P., as you as you heard us in our intro, uh, is a Heisman Trophy voter, is a member of the Football Writers, wrote for Bama Magazine. Yes, now, sir. you may have to explain that a little bit, but the first thing I have to ask you yes. is you go by the initials AP. That's correct. And uh, I'm sure that's not the AP people that put out the news. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, uh, what, can I sneak it in and ask what AP you can, says? You can ask me. And I tell people that when I was a young boy, I always had a passion for sports. And we would be in the playground, and I'd always recite the facts and figures, and I said, "Man, you know more than the Associated Press." <laughs> <laughs> so Associated Press didn't That's get it. in there. Yeah, huh? yeah, there okay. you go. Hey, Pete, the uh, um, as you look around and uh, find us a place to start, we we'll talk about uh, what you've done in the past, and we we'll certainly want to talk about your Heisman vote and how that comes about, and then being the part of the Football Writers Association, but. Take us back a little bit. Uh, you were born in Connecticut? Connecticut, way up north, way up north. Yeah, yeah and in your, Alabama. Your, your dad was born in the same little town I was born. in. Nicola, Nicola, Alabama, sure right. was. Uh, 1915, he was born, and they were, he was born up there by the reservation and uh, yeah. moved to Robertsdale in the horse and wagon when he was five years old. So he went to Robertsdale High School, and at 90 years old, Lou, he was inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame for Robertsdale. How about that? Yeah, he was the captain of the football team, and as a junior, the basketball team went up to Tuscaloosa played in the state tournament. Him and his, him and his brother was 20 months younger. How about that? So uh, there is a history of sports in the family. Then. Yes, sir, there sure is. And so we've been coming to Alabama ever since I was a little boy, my grandmother, and I, I guess there's a couple hundred cousins I have here. Yeah. <laughs> you do have some. There's some Stedhams around this part of the world, that's for sure. Uh, A.P. Stedham's our special guest here on Up Talk. AP, the, uh, as you look uh, around the, the athletics now, particularly college football, 
things have really changed a good bit in college ranks. And I, I do have a question I'm going to ask. I'll put you on the spot a little bit about <laughs> whether they, we need to be paying athletics uh, or athletes at this stage or not. And, but uh, I want to save that one, okay? Okay. All right, tell us a little bit about your work with uh, Bama Magazine. Yeah, Bama Magazine, it's interesting how I got into sports. Lou. I was in business prior to that. I graduated from the University of Alabama, but I always had that passion for sports and followed uh, college football religiously and college basketball and professional sports. And uh, I called up a gentleman by the name of Kirk McNair, and Kirk was the sports information director for Coach Bryant during the 70s when they had that run of 100 wins. That's the first time in a decade. And then he started Bama Magazine, uh, and the only uh, outlet that beat him to the punch by a few months was uh, something that wrote about Kentucky basketball. Okay, <laughs> and so Alabama Magazine is really was to cover at Alabama University of Alabama sport. You know, that's right, and I I got to know Kurt through the years. Subscribed to the magazine, and there was a a basketball camp, ABCD basketball camp, ABCD basketball camp in New Jersey, run by Sonny Vaccaro. People know him through Nike. Oh, I, in fact, I quote Sonny in one of my books. Okay, then yeah. you know about Sonny. Yeah, so I, uh, I asked Kirk, I said, if you give me a credential for that event, I'll write something for you. So I did and went down to that camp. I took my dad with me, actually. And we, I wrote something, and Kirk liked it, and that's how I got my entrance into sports. How about that? I can tell you the first four lines of the part that Sonny wrote. God has given us two ends. They have a common length. With the bottom end, we move, and the top end, we think. So he goes on from there. But, He's a but, character. That sounds like Sonny, doesn't it? It absolutely does. <laughs> I, uh, I, I really look at uh, from, from the standpoint of uh, ability to, to write, and I've always been amazed that you, you week after week after week if you're doing something uh you, you've got to come up with a few different lines you know you do yeah my brother is the uh noted writer in our family he has a degree in journalism and economics and a master's in business and i tell people i try to tell a good story right. from a, a family of good storytellers my mother and my dad so, but I like the personalities. I've seen many, many games, but it's always the personalities that uh, keep me in sports. How about that? AP Sedum, our special guest here. AP, uh, now currently you're hosting a uh, radio show. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, WHEP in uh, Foley, Alabama. And uh, the most interesting part for me, Lou, is it's the oldest and longest uh, affiliate on the Auburn Radio Network. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I speak about Alabama football primarily because I cover Alabama, but we also talk about Auburn and their athletic programs as well. So it's one hour. It's every Monday. Uh, I usually try to have a couple guests, somebody from Alabama, somebody from Auburn, right. and I don't like to be on too long. No one can get tired of me. Well, that's right. It, it, amen to that one. <laughs> you know, it is, uh, and I know Clark Stewart well at WHEP for through the years. Um, and as part of that, you're also uh, doing a documentary called The Wishbone Boys. Huh? Tell us a bit about uh, The Wishbone. Now, let's go back. We're dating ourselves. Yes. Let's go to the University of Alabama that Coach Bryant ran back in the 80s. Isn't that right? Uh, actually, it was the 70s. He, he ran it 71 to 82, and he, uh, it really changed his legacy. The legacy of the University of Alabama football program, and I mean that leads up to Nick Saban uh, winning championships now. But um, in 1971, they surprised the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. They had the Texas coaching staff come to Tuscaloosa, and they were explaining that offense, the triple option. And Coach Bryant said, "We're going to sink or swim." Darrell yeah, Wall ran that at the University of Texas. That's right. Emory Ballard was the college coach who implemented that system. And uh, so Coach Bryant, you know, he won with defense. He won with passing, Kenny Stabler and Joe Namath. And then he won with the triple option. So we interviewed about 100 people from that era, those 12 years. That was 12 of his 25, and he had another three national championships. Right. And uh, Alabama – was an unbelievable program in the 70s, winning those three championships. And we interviewed Ozzie Newsome and John Hanna, Dwight Stevenson, uh, Johnny Musso, uh, Tony Nathan, Major Ogilvy, uh, Wayne Wheeler. You're talking about a lot of guys in the Hall of Fame there. Some great players. We interviewed all the primary quarterbacks. Terry Davis was the first, maybe the nift, the, the best probably. Richard Todd, uh, Gary Rutledge, Jeff Rutledge, Walter Lewis, Stedman Shealy. So we have a website called the Wishbone Boys, and people People can look at those interviews, those, those takes, and we're trying to get that 
uh, finished uh, CBS Sports Network. I visited with them twice in New York City. They really enjoy that project. We're trying to get the national sponsors. That's the uh, hold up right now. But we had so much fun interviewing all those players, and uh, the, okay. the, the it was great. Well, AP, we're going to have to take a quick break, but uh, we'll be back, and we're going to talk about being a Heisman voter and uh, a few other things on the other side. You stay with us. You're listening and watching Up Talk. I'm Lou Vickery, along with our special guest, A.P. Stepp. Well, welcome back to Up Talk. I'm Lou Vickery, and we're having some fun here. I, I tell you, I always enjoy talking with the people, obviously, that have a good feel for athletics, having been around it most of my life. But um, this thing about being a Heisman Trophy voter, uh, even it's like, what, 900 or so of them or throughout the whole country, or maybe throughout the whole world. I don't know how far it's <laughs> that's been, but uh, that, that's quite, a, quite an honor. Yeah, Lou, it always intrigued me since I was a young boy about the Heisman Trophy was the greatest honor in college football. And so at the time I was covering Alabama, you know, they never had a Heisman Trophy winner. Coach yeah. Bryant had one, one, win, one winner at Texas A&M, John David Crow. So I called up and I wanted to be credentialed for that event in New York City. And I got to be friends with Tim Henning, who's uh, associated with the Heisman Trophy. And uh, along the way, I kind of asked him about being a voter. And the next thing I know, I got an, received an email and it said I was a voter. So I just you have to ask in life, right? I mean, you, you can't let it sit. If it's on your mind, you know, approach somebody and see what can be done. Very interesting. Uh, the kind of year that Joe Burrow had with uh, LSU, I, I'm... I don't know if there's been a better year in college football. Uh, the best year I ever saw one person have in college football was Cam Newton. Yes, that's right. But Joe at Auburn, at Auburn right? But Joe Burrow surpassed uh, that accomplishment with not 40 touchdown passes, Lou, not 50, but 60 touchdown passes, and he was throwing the ball down the field about 75 percent accuracy. In 15 games, that's four a game, right? It, it, it's too bad he didn't have a bad game at three, right? He had to catch <laughs> up with five the next the next weekend, but that's no, he was true. fabulous. That was the best I've ever seen. You know, talking about college uh, athletics and college football, uh, now they're talking about uh, maybe possibly uh, paying the college athletes. Now, I want to mention one thing. When I came along and was offered scholarships, they paid laundry money. It wasn't much, right? But they did pay you about fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. That's right. Fifteen right. a month, and uh, fifteen a month in those days would go. You know, I mean, you could extend it to get a hamburger for a dollar. So. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and wash your clothes out in the sink. You know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, it's funny you asked that question, Lou. I was at an SEC uh, media days a few Julys ago, and. Uh, I asked all 14 coaches about the total cost of attendance, how it might affect their program. The total cost of attendance is the amount above and beyond the room tuition and board. You can offer a ballerina to the University of Alabama more money than you could to a football player until they changed this a few years ago to receive the total cost of attendance. It's different for every school. It could be $1,000 at one school, 8000 at another. And the figures have nothing to do with the athletic department. They're sent to the Department of Education in Washington. So it's funny, I asked Steve Spurrier the question. He knew to the penny the amount. And at that time, he was 70 years old. That was his last year's last press conference at the SEC Media Days. But as a student athlete, you can receive the Pell Grant, which is about 5500 if you're eligible at some place like the University of Alabama, Alabama and Auburn University. It's 5000 So that's $10,000 of spending money. So unless you send it home, you should have something available to take a, your date out at you night. See, or, I wasn't one aware of that. Yeah, people a lot of uh, when you hear people say, "I don't have any money to buy a pizza." I mean, well, what were you doing with the fifty five hundred dollars? Then remind the five six thousand dollars that you're receiving now the last few years with the total cost of attendance. Now, paying players that is so complicated, Lou. I I have no answer, but I did have the state senator from California on my radio show who proposed the pay for play. And he was telling me, for instance, I said, what about the second string left guard? Well, maybe they're gonna go back to their hometown and an automobile dealership will offer them a sponsorship, you know, some money. But it has to be through the individual, it's not through the school. Right. So, so, but, but I still think it's gonna be like the Wild West. Oh, I, I have a, I, as I think about it, I really have an overall problem just uh, seeing how they can manage it. What you're gonna end up with is all the high profile guys get the money, 
what happens to the guy like the left guard that uh, even the first string left guard right. that doesn't get anything or any offers? Yeah, so your team might have some divide. Yes, yeah. I, I, and I see that as a possibility. Yeah, it could be a problem. And like I said, I don't understand how it's going to operate. I, I really don't until yeah. I see it. And it'll massage itself, I guess. There you go. A.P. Stenemeyer, special guest here on Up Talk. A.P. is... Uh, Wrote for Bama Magazine. He currently hosts the radio show, and he's a Heisman Trophy voter. Uh, a football Writers Association. You get to vote on a lot of things there too, right? Yes, we do different awards: the Outland Trophy. Yeah. And, um, I also vote for the Blinnikoff Award, the wide receiver. So, yeah, that comes through. I, I love being a part of the Football Writers Association. They send us a booklet every year with all the names of contacts at every university. Oh yeah. So that's so, what so you know, <laughs> so. And to me, the, 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 when you speak of like an Outland Trophy, that's for Lyman, right? Yes. And, and uh, the Blink, Blinkoff, uh, Fred Blinkoff, Bl 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 uh, who played at Florida State and then with the Oakland Raiders. That's he right. was there when Stapler was uh, with the that's well, right. Kenny Stapler that's from down our neck of the woods. That was his buddy, sure was, was yeah. I had a chance to interview Fred when I went to Canton, Ohio, and uh, Kenny was inducted. So I interviewed, I think, six or seven Oakland Raiders. Uh, Tom Flores, a former coach, and Art Shell, the owner of the Oakland Raiders, Mark Davis. Earl Campbell, that was a great thrill to interview Earl Campbell. He wanted to go on record about Kenny Stabler. Yeah. And so that was a lot of fun to, to get, get in touch with those people. You know, the, when I went to Canton, my son and I, my oldest son and I, went to Canton to see the Hall of Fame there. If they were had the game between Maslin, Ohio, and uh, I can't remember the rival. They had a McKinley, big, McKinley, McKinley. Is that it? Yeah. Oh my goodness. They had a game remember. there that night. We were there on a Friday, and so it was a Friday night game. <laughs> so we hung around 20,000 people, from, filled up the stadium for the high school game. But uh, it's uh, really, it's quite, it's quite an intriguing place to, to visit. Yes, and they're going to have a big village now. They're building it. costs a lot of money, Lou. Um, I was coming back from the Super Bowl last week, yeah. and on the plane to, uh, I think it was Nashville, and there was Dave Baker, the president of the Pro Football of Fame. He's a large gentleman, about 6'8 himself. He dwarfs these football players. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know, he was explaining to me some of the things that are going to be done. You know, the, and talking about the Super Bowl, you've been to several. Yes, yes, and they're always a lot of fun because I see media people from all across the country, and I'm trying to get involved uh, with some of the voting. There's 48 voters. There's nine people associated with the Senior Selection Committee, so I'm trying to help some people with that as well. Hey, Pete Shedham, our special guest here on Up Talk. Hey, Pete, I, uh, you know, there may be someone out there that's trying to make a decision about, well, maybe I want to be a writer. Maybe I would like to do that. What kind of advice would you get them? What, what, uh, what would you have to say to them? I'd say don't be shy like I was for a long time. <laughs> but uh, you can just reach out nowadays with the computer. It changed everyone's life. It certainly changed mine for the good. So, you know, you can approach people to uh, be an intern. Maybe if you're in college, get involved in the athletic program. That's the best advice I would give somebody. Get started young. Yeah. But if you're in the middle of a different career, there's always, they're always looking for people to write or cover events, and, and you could learn along the way. But if you have a good knowledge of the sport, you have the command of the English language, and you're not a, in, afraid to engage people, you'll do just fine. And ask questions where there's never a yes or no answer. How about that? Uh, that's good advice. You know, I, I think about, uh, you talk about the computer changing things. And uh, then they come along with uh, Grammarly and some of the things that uh, with Grandma. So now them done deeds and them Lars I use in my <laughs> 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 Yes, sir. <laughs> Hey, P, anything you'd like to leave our audience with before we let you go? No, I just say if you have a passion and you want to pursue something, don't be afraid. You know, uh, that's how do you manage your fear? Everyone has fear, Lou. Yes. So, but how do you manage your fear? So just pursue your passion in life. And if you like sports, there's so many opportunities, so many areas and so many facets that you can contribute. Absolutely. Hey, Pete, thank you for coming. Hey, come back and visit with us again. Anytime, Lou. My pleasure. Thank you very much. That's A.P. Stedham. Oh, well, welcome back to Up Talk. I'm Lou Vickery, your host. And, uh, well, we have another wonderful guest for you uh, that's in studio. And uh, we want to introduce Tammy Lindsay. Tammy, how are you? I'm great, Lou. How are you? I'll tell you what. You know... If I was any better, I'd be twins. But other than that, I feel great. 
<laughs> well, I thought that sounded pretty good, I, yeah, but nobody else in the audience did, one. huh? It was oh, good. Well, you yeah. know, that's the way it is. <laughs> Timmy, it is great to have you here. It's great to be here. Yeah. The, t- uh, Timmy, you now have Timmy Lindsay Fitness, but uh, there was a real road to get to that point, huh? We're going to talk about your business, but uh, I'd like for us to go back and tell us a little bit about your background and how you got to where you are today, okay? Okay. Okay, where to begin? Um, I am a mom of six young men, and I uh, was a stay-at-home mom. And for twenty over 26 years, I guess, I was a stay-at-home mom. And my husband and I, we did have a landscape business, so I did do, you know, bookkeeping, mm-hmm. things like that. But for the most part, I was the mom, homeschooled my kids, and... Uh, My husband struggled a lot with mental issues, and the older he got, the worse his mental issues became, and so he eventually committed suicide. How long ago was the suicide? This was nine years ago. Nine years ago. Uh Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, two of my sons are the ones who found him. Hmm. They were 18 and 13 at the time, so it was very, very devastating for them. So, um, you know, our family had to get through that, and remarkably, we've we've come through it pretty well, especially the boys. It's amazing that they are doing as well as they are. Uh, but all of a sudden, after being a stay-at-home mom, I, w- I was married when I was 16, by the way. Oh, and my okay. first son when I was barely 17. So oh. I just went from being a teenager to a mom to, you know, then I was all of a sudden working again. <laughs> so I w- I've always been into fitness and, you know, just wanting to stay healthy. Right. So that's just always been a passion of mine. So I went back to work at the YMCA And that's how I became a personal trainer. Right. And let's see, it was nine years ago when my husband passed away. And then five years to the date, the anniversary of his death, my youngest son, Gunner, was diagnosed with leukemia. He was nine years old. Nine at the time, huh? Yes. That was your youngest? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so he was diagnosed with a very curable rate, a a very curable form of leukemia. Mm -hmm like a 90% cure rate. So, you know, I wasn't, um, of course I was worried, but I thought, okay, it'll be fun. You know, we just have two and a half years of treatment and he'll be great. It'll be fun. Um, But unfortunately, when he was almost done with treatment, he relapsed and we, I took him to get a new uh, clinical trial in Philadelphia at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. And that didn't work. So he relapsed again, and I found another clinical trial in Seattle at Seattle Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. Took him to that. This went on for four years. So this was um, May of this past year, 2019, that we went to Seattle for this clinical trial. And unfortunately, Gunner had a bad reaction to the treatment, and he... Uh, he passed away, went to heaven. I don't like to say that he died now, because... Now, now, Timmy, let me jump in this. Now, he was nine when this originally... Mm-hmm. Now, how old was he when he passed away? Thirteen. Thirteen. So yeah. four years he yeah. went through Yeah. these various treatments and all. Yeah, it was tough. Yeah. He went through everything, and I took him all over the country trying to find the solution, find the cure. Right. But... <laughs> He had always relapsed in his spinal fluid, his brain, you know, the spinal fluid goes from your brain through your spinal cord. And so when they did the treatment, it all went to his brain to try to kill the leukemia cells. Mm -hmm. And it was just too much, too fast. And so like the night before he was great, he was fine. The day before we went to Target and he was happy talking with his brothers on the phone and he got sick at about 1.30 on Thursday morning, and by that afternoon, he was gone. His brain just swelled so fast that it crushed his brain stem. Mm-hmm. And it just, I mean, I'm thankful that it did happen that fast because I don't think he ever knew what yeah. was going on. But, of course, we hoped that he would be cured. We didn't think that he would actually 
die from it, but it's God's plan, and we try to focus on the positive, and we're getting through it. It's only been about eight months, but mm -hmm. and it's tough, but I try to look at the positive side of everything. I try to focus on, you know, the time we have with him and the blessings that God has given us. My granddaughter was born six weeks after he went to heaven. So oh, yeah. that was a blessing. I got my first girl. Yeah. So it's just been, it's, it's really been ups and downs, but right. it's been amazing. And my family's doing great. We're all together. We all live in southern Alabama in the same area, not mm -hmm. the same house. But <laughs> in the same area. Yes, not well, in the same Well, tell us, just briefly, tell us the ages of the boys now. My oldest son is 35. Then there's 28, 27. That's like a test, Lou. 23 <laughs> and 17. And then okay. Gunner was 13. Yeah, so, so there's a pretty good spread there between oh, yeah. the first and the last, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's kind of the way it was with my... I'm the oldest, and I had a sister of 16 years difference, but yours is basically over 20 then. Yeah, right? my oldest son is technically old enough to be the youngest two's father. <laughs> oh, man. So I started good. young and just kept going. <laughs> well, you did. You started young. That's <laughs> but right. it's such a blessing now because I don't know how I could have made it without them. Right. They're just amazing, and they're just so good to me and so helpful and and to Gunner too, when we were going through the all the treatment, they mm -hmm. were so supportive and so helpful to me. Well, how many uh, how many are married now? One, just one. Just the one. Just one so that, far. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just the one with the baby. All right. Well, that's <laughs> and my daughter-in-law is beautiful and amazing. I couldn't ask for a more oh. perfect daughter-in-law. Oh, that's always great to hear. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> all right. Well, we got to take a quick break. Uh, Tammy Lindsay is our special guest here on Up Talk. And uh, we're going to step aside, and when we come back, we're going to talk uh, about Tammy and uh, her business and how she got started and how she's developed it and so forth, okay? Okay. You stay with us. You're watching Up Talk with Lou Vickery. Well, welcome back to Up Talk. I'm Lou Vickery here, uh, and we're talking with Tammy Lindsay. Uh, Tammy, um, Getting through something like this, it, it's, and we've been through it before, I'm, and unfortunately, it's it's never great to lose a child. No. And it's got to be one of the toughest things. And I, I think it is the worst thing. And I thing. think for mothers yeah. particularly, you know, yeah. it makes it extremely yeah. difficult. But you, you're a forward-looking person, yeah. and you've decided that, uh, hey, you're going to do some special stuff, huh? Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about okay. Tammy Lindsay Fitness and what you do and how you started and so forth. Okay? okay. Okay. Well, I was a personal trainer. Years. I've been a personal trainer for about eight years. But since Gunner was sick, you know, I would I would start working and then I would have to stop and I would start back and I would have to stop because he would get good and then he would get bad again. And so, um, after he went to heaven, I. You know, I'd been a mom for 35 years taking care of kids, and all of a sudden I had no one to take care of, and especially the last four years before, yeah, sure. because I was always taking care of him, taking him to the doctor, the hospitals, whatever. So I um, started looking in Fairhope for a place to rent to train people, because I don't really like working in commercial gyms, because it's hard to work around all the other people. And I saw a release sign. The first place that I called, the man who owned the building, Walt Bolton, he said, yeah, I have some warehouse space for rent. That will be perfect for you. I actually even have some commercial equipment in the space that I bought for my employees, hmm. and they aren't using it, as you know how that goes. Oh, and sure. <laughs> so I said, okay, great. And it just worked out. It couldn't have been more perfect. It just the first place I called and that was so God I just I know that was God because it was just, it, that he had equipment and everything it's just it's just been perfect and I've been getting building my clientele ever since I'm super busy now and it's just it's just been great how about that now t t when it comes to personal training 
What exactly do you do from a personal trainer? My personal trainer is on a tennis court. So Yeah, I mean. see, that's the thing about personal training. It's personal. Yeah. So you do what each person needs you needs. to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, my youngest client is in sixth grade, and I'm getting her ready to try out for the volleyball team next year. So, right. um, you know, I'm working on her strength and speed and endurance, things like that. Yeah. Then I have a lady who's 75 who just started last week who does, she's a snowbird. If anyone doesn't know what that is, it's the people who come to Southern Alabama in the winter, then they leave in the summer. We call them snowbirds. She does um, CrossFit in Colorado, when she's in Colorado. She's 75, does CrossFit. Uh oh. So, yeah, I have a few 69 year olds who are amazing. They could do more than most 20 year olds. Oh. So, you know, it just depends on what the person needs. I just meet them where they are and work with what they need for me. So basically you you make an assessment of yes, some kind with, and, for uh, their goals and yeah. yeah, what what they if they have some injuries that you need to work around or work mm. with and yeah. That's very good. You know, uh, we're going to uh, uh, take a quick break here, and we're going to be back uh, with Tammy Lindsay, and uh, we're talking about her business, and we'll step aside, and when we come back, I have a real, I don't want to say a personal question, but in a way it is, okay? (laughs) So we'll be back on the other side. You are watching Up Talk. I'm Lou Vickery. Stay with us. All right. <laughs> Welcome back. Up Talk. I'm Lou Vickery. Well, we have so much fun on the break. We, I, I hope we're having that much fun while we're doing this. But we are excited about having T- Tammy Lindsay with us. Tammy, uh, you know, we're talking about your business. And uh, I, just as you uh, look back now and uh, what, what has happened over the uh, last year or so, but as you started to really build in and, and start developing your business, share a little bit with us about some of the things, um, the emotions that you went through and, and what it's taken you to get to this stage. Well, of course, you have so much sadness and loss. And with my son, of course, I had, I felt I had so much responsibility for as a single mom I felt like I had to fix it. Yeah. I felt like I had to find the cure because the doctors didn't seem to be able to fix it. So I was doing, you know, taking them all over the place, researching constantly. So I had a lot of responsibility on me. So it would be easy for me to give in to guilt and think that, oh, I shouldn't have done that clinical trial. What if I wouldn't have done that? Maybe he would have lived longer, whatever. But I just, you know, you can't, that's one of the big things I think about grieving is you you just have to not let yourself focus on all the negative things. Yeah, sure. And it's easy it to just, do that. Isn't yeah, it? it's so easy to just let right. yourself get caught up in that. You have to focus on the positive. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm a Christian, so I have a very strong faith and that helps me tremendously. Mm-hmm. I also have a natural positive attitude. So I usually try to look at the positive side of everything, but if mm. if anyone out there is going through something similar or does in the future, I would just say to them to please just try your best to focus on the positive and try to walk s- on the sunny side yes, of the street. Right. Try to focus on God every day. Uh, the first, if you put God first, it helps so much. Yeah. And just when you wake up in the morning, take time to think and to set your mind for the day. Don't just rush through things and mm-hmm. you know, it's just it's just a lot better if you try to focus on the positive. Right. And and you know, you, you mentioned about when you get up, it's uh, it's amazing how that you can really formulate the right attitude right. as you get out of bed, right? If you get up the last morning and you're just pushing the reset button on your alarm over and over again and racing out the door, you're not gonna have a good productive no. day. <laughs> no, you you really need to have something to to get you out of bed, don't yes. you? Yes, huh? I, I have a. There's a statement in our book, um, motivators, and we talk about uh, the fact that you know you, you getting out of bed is relatively. You have to have a strong commitment. 
You have to have something that you're committed to. Yeah, and excited that, that, about that, it. That's even. right, and that's really helps you get out of the. It does. Bed. I, that's one thing with my writing. I, I write a lot early in the morning, and I, I sometimes I can my mind starts long before I get up. Oh yeah. But I'm already thinking about some of the things that I want to get down, put on paper, and. Uh, it uh, really keeps you going, doesn't it? Yeah, and I do think when you're in bed at night, sometimes like when you wake up at 3 in the morning, that's when your mind really works yeah. the best. Well, and you I can used really to keep think. a little notebook right by the bed because right. you never know when you get And we, you know, yeah. once you've had it, it could go away and you never have it again. Right. You, know, you might completely forget the next day yeah. what you're thinking right. about. You know, I, I haven't shared this with our audience, and I, I just shared. I am a, uh, I am a uh, leukemia survivor. Uh, uh, very fortunate that uh, uh, mine was very treatable. Um, it, when I, f- I first diagnosed it, it had a different name than it has now. It was called uh, NK cell leukemia, which means natural killing cells and uh, uh, leukemia. Now they call it hairy cell leukemia yeah. because it has little hairy mm-hmm. things and it uh, really kind of affects uh, platelets more than anything oh, else. Okay. You know, it, it, I guess they can put anything blood-related into the same category. Yeah. And uh, But I have uh, now 21 years, and so... That's awesome. And don't, I don't... Uh, I just continue to go on, and the, the, the only real effect that I get is I get some uh, anemia along. Mm. I get a little acute anemia. Mm. But uh, certainly blessed and... Uh, you know, you just and, and I, I agree. You just there are things that you you could let get you down. That could get the best of you. You know, I, I another statement that I can, if I can quote from the book is that it's easiest thing in the world to do is to quit. It right. Is. It yeah. is. That's an, it takes no talent to yeah. quit, but it does take talent to if you something knocks you down to get back up and work as hard as you can to stay up. That's right. Would you agree with that? Yes, one? but it's so That's rewarding good. to do to get back up. Yes, very so. Much so, and uh, I think uh, those of it that are believers understand that uh, that's uh, it's great to have somebody you can talk to and That's help right. you through some of the wrong and spots, other right? people too. Absolutely, you're furnished with those, aren't you? Right. I think the greatest source of earthly strength we have is relationships. That's you know? right. The ability to uh, relate to people, and it's and also important to seek out good positive relationships with people you know not to keep the negative in your life you know that, that there's and then a relation to the statement i made about the easiest thing that the world will do is quit well the easiest thing the world will do is to find negative it to it's nothing that's to find true. A negative in a situation that's true and you can always find focus. something negative but you can also find t- something positive what I you think. want to do is there's always a focus yes the, the chinese call that the yin yang <laughs> you know there's a for every yin there's a yang right so for every positive there's a negative but you fo- where is your focus positive there always you go. tell me how would you like to leave things with our audience i would just like to well thank you for having me here today well, and it's been a pleasure I would like to tell people that um, just to try to stay positive, try to focus on the good things in life, and no matter what happens, don't let life get you down. Don't let it get the best of you. You know, be happy and be encouraged. I have a website, TammyLindsayFitness.com, and I'm on Facebook as well. My name is spelled T A M I. L I N D S E Y. It's just one M? Yes. Just one M. Okay. So, yeah, that's why I always spell it because uh-huh. it's a little tricky. <laughs> but yes, people can find me on Facebook or, or the web or call me, whatever you want to do. But uh, at Tammy Lindsay Fitness. Dot com. Dot com. Yes, sir. With one M. One M. Okay. <laughs> and it's a S E Y. Yes, sir. And not an A Y. Right. <laughs> yeah, but you know, before we had the spoken language. Uh, I mean, before we had the written language, the spoken word language, that's where we got so many different kind of names. Right. I have a, a name in my background that was used nine different ways. Oh, my goodness. So. <laughs> wow. Never know. <laughs> nope. Tammy, thank you. Thank you, It's been Luke. great having you. It's been great to be here. Well, let's do this for today, and uh, we're going to be right back after this break. We'll close things out, but we do... Appreciate uh, Tammy stopping by. We had A.P. Stedham with us earlier. So we've had a great day, and uh, 
Hey, you stay right there because I want to share something very important with you when we come back. What a day, huh? I tell you, well, Jacob Cook, uh, our producer, and uh, you, you're the jack of all trades. You think about that, huh? Just about. Yeah, and the master of many too, right? Don't know about that one. <laughs> well, I do. Well, you know, we were talking earlier when AP was with us about the uh, Sonny Vaccaro, and I told him that I had quoted in the in the book, and uh, this is the, the book is entitled. Motivators. It said, "For our salespeople destined for greatness is." Uh, and uh, there's our our cohort in crime, Mr. Jason Will on the front. Jason on secret assignment, still out in the ocean somewhere. You know, I hope they don't get quarantined. You know, you think about that. You know, if, but anyway, I, I, we won't go there. All right. But I wanted to share uh, something that Sonny wrote. I, I gave the first four lines, and I want to finish them. And I better get my uh, cheaters here, because if I don't, then I won't be able to read it, you know, okay? Here we go. Two winning ends is the title of this. You have two winning ends that have a common length. With the bottom end, you move, and with the top end, you think. And your success depends on how you maximize their use. For common sense tells you, with both you win, one you lose. You like that? I like that one. I do. That's good. And I, I, there's one other thing I wanted to share with you, and that is that it's a term that I've used many times with people, and that term is forgettery. you got to have a good forgettery. Jacob, you know what I mean by the forgettery? I'm not so sure. Tell me a little bit. Well, that's fine. You know, we talk about having a good memory. Well, it's great to have a good memory, but it's also great to have a good forgettery. And there are some things that happen to us in life that we just best off to, to forget them and move on. And I've always used the analogy, uh, and I'll tell you where I heard the term originally. I uh, was uh, pitching a ball game. I came into the game, and uh, with the bases loaded, uh, my job was the so-called closer. I mean, where you close it out and hope you take home a win. We, we're up by three runs. I throw one pitch, guy hits a grand slam home run. We lose the game seven to six. Well, at two o'clock in the morning, I'm walking the streets. And I did, the only person that's out there is a policeman. He's checking doors. In those days, they, I guess they go from business to business, make sure everything was locked up. And I told him, he said, what are you doing out here? I told him, well, I had a bad night. I told him about it. And he's the one that used the term. He says, let me tell you something, young fella. You've got to have a good forgettery. You know, it, it just, it, I can imagine in sports that that's very important. Because, you know, in sports you see the results of what you're doing right away. It's not going to be tomorrow. It's right then. Isn't that true? And so I've always used the term forgettery. It's just great to have a good forgettery. Put things behind us and let's move forward. And uh, with that, we're going to uh, just let you know that you can find the book, Motivators for Salespeople Destined for Greatness. You can find it at Lou Vickery Books. You can find it at Amazon. Or you could ask your favorite bookstore to order it for you. So there you go. Well, until next time, keep a smile on your face. Keep happiness in your heart. Keep optimism on your tongue. Until we meet again, you have a great time, and thank you for your time. Hi, I'm Dan Vega, and thank you for watching our channel. I want to take a second to tell you about a resource that's helping thousands of people across the country, Blue University. Blue University is the premier online business school for entrepreneurs and business leaders. You know, if you find yourself in a day-to-day -day grind where you've lost your joy or you're just tired of struggling, then check out blue.university. That's B-L-U dot university. I can promise that you receive nothing short of a multi-million dollar education. And if you want a completely different life in three to six months and a way to create wealth in five years or less, then again, check it out. That's blu.university. 
Find out why blue is the new color of success. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel or to give us a good rating, but that's only if you see value. And when you do receive value, make sure to share it with someone else. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.